cat's two cents. I really hope you listen and I hope you take what I say to heart in love. I was wondering how long it was going to take you before you woke up and smelled the coffee. How many more black eyes is it going to take? How many more busted lips? How many more rapes, beatings, abuse? How many more words have to slice you up, chew you, and spit you out before you get the message, this is not love? I don't care if you're male or female. If you are a victim of abuse, that is not what God called you to be. It's not. And you know, sometimes we don't realize that's a little form of idol worship. When you allow someone, you willingly stay in a position, in a location, in a, a dangerous, precarious area where a person has access to you anytime they choose. They can screw you one minute, they can hug you the next, then bam, they can beat you, kick you, break bones, do whatever, and you stay, and you stay, and you stay. Have you ever asked yourself, why? Why do you stay? Hmm? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Maybe you need to ask God, what's the real reason? What is it that keeps you there? Are you under the influence of demonic control? Are you under the influence of fear, intimidation? Have you bought into their lie that they will never let go of you? Or have they told you to hit the road and you chose to stay? because you were afraid to, to launch out into your own destiny. What's the reason? What keeps you there? I'm really asking you to ask yourself because there are powers at work that a lot of times we don't think about. Remember I did that skit about the demon of seduction and the demon of addiction? And how they work and they correlate together, they collaborate, they pull you in, woo you in, and then once they get you locked down in a relationship, then they begin to pounce upon you. Well, God is able to deliver you from that. See, what you're doing is you're looking for love, you're looking for affirmation. You're not gonna get affirmation from a kick, you're not gonna get affirmation from a punch from a baseball bat upside your head. You're not going to get an affirmation from broken bones. You're going to stay there and prove to this person you love them. Prove to this person you'll stick it out with them through thick and thin because they have problems. They have issues. They've got a lot of pressure and they're hurting. Right. <clears throat> I'm sorry, baby. No. You're going for the okie doke. Stop it. Wake up, baby. This is not God's desire for your life. He does not call us to be abused. That's not one of the callings of God. That may be a calling of the devil. That may be a calling of the poop butt that's, that's oppressing you that's sucking the life out of you but that's not God's calling see God is love and when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that explicitly describes what love acts like waddles like and quacks like and if you're not getting what that says love is about you're not getting love you're getting something else now this is the thing that gets me some of you, I always refer to the drug of choice. Some of you have a drug of choice and you think that you're looking at love, but what you're looking at is the junky imitation love. It's artificial, like artificial sweetener. Have you ever tasted twin, sugar twin? It's white like sugar, flakes like sugar, mm -hmm. sweetens like sugar. But guess what? You taste that sucker and it tastes like chemicals. You know it's not sugar. 
then on top of that, it leaves a nasty aftertaste. Just like saccharin. Ugh. But, guess what? Some of you are still willing to absorb that into your body. Now, my question to you is who convinced you that you do not have a right to get your freedom and live your life your way? Who told you that lie? That you must stand behind your man and stick to your woman through thick and thin no matter what. You stay there. You vowed for better or for worse. Listen, for better or for worse means circumstances, not butt whoopings. For better or for worse means sickness. Things happen. Life happens. Misfortune. It does not mean having your teeth kicked in and you just get up and say, Yes, baby. Yes, darling, I'll do what you want. I'll stay with you no matter what. I'll die at your hands to show you how much I love you. That's idol worship, and it's sick. You really, really think there's something noble in that? Noble? You gotta be kidding. No. That's honestly, okay. Let me say this in love. I'm saying it in love now. So, absorb it in love. Don't take it as a put down. But in all honesty, that's called being stuck on stupid. And you're allowing yourself to be played as a fool. You're allowing yourself to be the devil's flunky, the oppressor's flunky, the abuser's flunky, you're a flunky. But you're not a flunky because of who you are. You're a flunky because of what you choose to do. What you choose to put up with. And once you decide to walk out that door, that door swings both ways, baby. Let it swing the right way as you walk out. If you really want to be free. Now, for those of you who like abuse, who are masochistic and you like pain... Hey, <clears throat> enjoy the party, baby. Stay as long as you like. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who know you're miserable, who are tired of being a punching bag, who are tired of being played, used, abused. Come on now. You really think that's all you can get from life? You really think, let, let me share this with you. <clears throat> Years ago, when I first got saved, I used to look at some of the women at the church. And I said, hmm, I said, she is so pretty. She is so statuesque. She is so classy. Oh, I wish I looked like that. But guess what? I was the fat one. I've been married twice. First husband committed adultery, so I had biblical standing on getting a divorce. And then I married my second husband, and he was a dream come true, baby. Marriage made in heaven. But let me tell you, the prettiest ones in church were not the ones getting the husbands. They were the ones getting the dates. The homely ones, the basic ones, the all right ones, some were pretty. Some of my friends that I got are very pretty and they're married. But the majority of the women that got the husbands were not the beauty queens. So if you think you can't break free because nobody will love you, who would want you? See, that's the lie they tell you. Nobody will want you. Who would want you? Look at you. You better be grateful that I even let you stay with me. You better be grateful. I, I picked you up from the gutter. I put you, I mean, come on. Stop it. They see what's in you. You don't see it, but they do. And they don't want you to see it. So they beat you down, beat you down, beat you down, beat you down, beat you down. So that you never see the potential, the beauty, the spark that's in you. See, they don't want you to see that. Because if you see it, you rise above them and you hit the road, Jack, when you wake up and smell the coffee. And you will live up to your fullest potential. And they'll be left in the back in the corner of the dark. Because they know they could never be half the person you are. But they don't want you to know it.
Mm -hmm. So it gives them power is to use you as their step stool. And they step up on you and stomp you down so they can rise higher and feel like they're the big honcho. They're the big, the big uh, kahuna or whatever you want to call it. They're just like, hey, I'm all that and a bag of chips. Look at me, everybody. Mm -hmm. While they're standing on your head. And you're, sl you're laying there allowing it when all you have to do is turn, drop them to the floor and get your heels to clicking and get out of Dodge. But I'm leaving it with you. That's your life. That's your decision. And I'm done trying to convince you that you're worthy of more. God bless you. Maybe God can do that one day if you take the time to ask him. Amen. Amen. Thank you.